The truth about long-term care. I uh, I know a lot of you, women in particular, and rightly so, are worried about this stuff. What if I go to a long-term care facility? What if I run out of money? What if, what if, what if? Man, you've been brainwashed. You've been, I just, oh, it's so frustrating to me. And we're going to talk about it here today. Now, for the record, for the thousandth time, I have long-term care insurance. My wife and I both do. We bought it from Knights of Columbus in 2011. 10, 11, probably 2012, so 10 years ago when I was 42 years old, my better half was 38. Because I have a mortgage and I have children at the house, the mortgage is slowly but surely being paid down. The children are slowly but or quickly being moved out of the house. Once the mortgage is paid off and the kids are moved out of the house, I will drop my long-term care insurance. Why do I have long-term care? Because there is a risk that if I, the breadwinner, were to have an injury of some sort and needed a long-term care facility, that would doom financially my spouse and her children. Well, my children, our children. Because you still have a mortgage. Can't have that. Thus, we protect against the risk. So that's what insurance does. You pay a small premium to cover a a catastrophic life uh, event, if that makes sense. And I just had a ghost come into this place and that's why that door opened and that ghost is named Finnegan. Let me close this door. Hold on a second. Now Pablo is licking someplace he shouldn't be licking on Finnegan. Pablo doesn't know pound me too. Pablo, come on. <laughs> no, they're both boys. Oh boy. Anyway, so I will carry long-term care insurance until then. And then when that happens, the kids are out of the house, the mortgage is paid, I'll drop. Because if I were to need to go to a long-term care facility, my wife would sell the house and downside. That's just that simple. All right. Anyway, so that's me. Uh, I'm 52. My wife is now 48. We've had it for over 10 years. You buy long-term. You buy any insurance when you don't need it. You don't buy your house uh, insurance when your house is on fire. You won't be able to get it. <laughs> you buy it when you're young and healthy and you don't need it. This is not to say don't buy long-term care insurance. I'm not saying that in the least. I have no clue what your circumstances are. But you buy insurance when the premiums are low to protect against a catastrophic risk. That's what you do. You don't buy insurance when premiums are high to protect against a less than catastrophic risk. That doesn't make sense. That's not insurance, which is why the whole healthcare industry is so jacked. Because it's no longer insurance. All right, anyway, so let's go to the numbers here because this is freaking mind-boggling. All right, so we're going to start with this right here. This from Consumer Affairs. So I just woke up this morning. I'm going to do another video on this article right here because this is silly. Hold on a second right here. 40% of Americans struggle to... I'll do another video on this, but it's just it's so negative and it's so silly. And if you just read in between the lines, you realize how much you've been lied to by idiots who write this stuff, man. Now, here's Consumer Affairs. I'm not saying this is not idiotic. This is actually a pretty good article. Long-term care statistics. And here we got these people that wear their masks weird because if it's an aerosol it's going to get right in there but wear your mask wear your mask i don't want to say anything more because i don't want to get banned but it's like a gaping hole right there kind of weird kind of weird anyway let's see what we got here uh together these institutions uh which are long-term care facilities there are over 65,600 regulated long-term care facilities uh in 2019 they serve over 8.3 million residents <laughs> i'm laughing because this is gonna you'll find you're gonna you'll laugh with me here in just a second they serve over 8.3 million residents including 286,000 in day-based caregiving, adult daycare, 811,000 in assisted living facilities, and basically one and a half million in nursing homes. Hmm. So they serve over 8.3 million, but we got between nursing homes, assisted living, and adult daycare, about, uh, was that, 2.5 million. Well, what happened to others? Over the next 10 years, the number of residents at each of these is expected to grow sharply, probably double or so. Hmm. But, 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 but again, we got about two, was that two and a half million needing routine care on a daily basis, staying at night, essentially, but they serve over 8.3 million. Weird, because that's basically 6 million people are not accounted for here. And consumer affairs doesn't seem to care. They're just like, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Hold on a second. 
going back to a million people in the U.S. over 65 right now, making 16.5% of the total population. 650 million people over the age of 65. It's weird. Actually, I thought this was interesting. The two oldest states are Florida and Maine. <laughs> Can't get much difference in that. Then West Virginia. I thought that was kind of funny, actually. Yeah, look at that. North, 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 north. Isn't that weird? All right. So let's keep going here. So anyway, so we got 50 million people are old in the United States, older than 65. As we see here today, we got 8.3 million people residents of some sort in a uh, assisted living facility, a, adult daycare. They the the uh, the long term care facilities serve over 8.3 million. So look, there's a method to my maps here. So we got uh, how many people do we say old people? Uh, 50 million. All right, gotcha. So we're going to take our trusted calculator. We got 50 million, 8.3 divided by 50. So 16.6% of the old population is being serviced somehow by long term, by assisted living, long term care facility, adult daycare. All right, so one in eight. All right, interesting. But of that one in eight, we got two and a half million people on, on route, are basically there night through the day at night staying there permanently if that makes sense so 2.5 divided by 50 that's five percent of the older people five percent one in 20 of old people are staying there on a nightly basis permanent basis probably a better way to look at it huh. so what happened to all the others i mean so first let me just back up so one in 20 and that's the way it's always been i remember reading this because I used to fall for this crap too. I remember reading that one time, and I think it was Journal for Financial Planning, probably ah, man, 2008 or nine. I said, well, what, what? Just one in 20 are actually a permanent residence of long-term care facility. That's not one in 20 Americans. That's one in 20 people over the age of 65. That's a 5%. I said, that's not what we've been led to believe in terms of the likelihood we all need it. So what happened to the other people? Well, let's dive in. Let's uh, find. So we're going to look at the CDC, all right? And this is from February 2019. The Vital and Health Statistics, National Center for Health Statistics. Long-term care provider service users, providers and service users in the U.S. And we're going to look, just type that word discharged. All right. <laughs> One second, this is so funny. Stupid in a good way, man. I just can't believe how many people, myself included, fall for this. In 2016, 65,600 paid regulated long-term care services providers in five major sectors served over 8.3 million people in the U.S. Okay, that's just what we said. In 2016, there are 286,000 current participants enrolled in adult daycare services. You know, we drop off mom, we pick her up, just like daycare, all right? There are 1.37 million in nursing homes and 811,000 in uh, residential care communities. Again, we just talked about that. We literally, this is exactly what we said, just what we just said right there. So what happened to the rest, you might ask? Oh, 4.5 million were discharged from home health agencies. They said, hey, you're good. 4.5 million were discharged. 1.4 million received hospice. So basically, at the end of the day, where do these other 6 million people go? One and a half of those 6 million, one, one and a half million of those 6 million received hospice. And, you know, based on their, they're, they're going to die. Four and a half million were discharged. Hey, pat you on the back. You're, you're good to go, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> Here are your four and a half million home health agencies that are discharged. It was the biggest thing that people needed from these guys. Hypertension. 90% were there for hypertension. High blood pressure. 90 flipping percent. Where's the Alzheimer's? He's in here someplace. Only 32% from Alzheimer's or dementia. 90 flipping percent. And they got a, a visual of this. Percent of long-term care service users, users with selected diagnosis in the United States, 2015 to 16. So nursing homes, 
All right. In nursing homes, 47% had Alzheimer's dementia. Again, but nursing homes only serve, what, 1.3 million people. All right. Let's go down here, though, shall we? Holy smokes, hypertension, heart disease. Look at that. What's that red, uh, ugly pink, home health agencies? What's that blue, nursing homes? Hmm, what causes heart disease? I'm just throwing it out there. What could possibly cause heart disease? Diet, maybe? I don't know. Stress, maybe? So everyone's like, freaking, I better work. I got to work. I got to work. I got to work because I don't want to be freaking poor and, uh, and sit in a nursing home with Alzheimer's. I got to keep digging this ditch, digging this ditch, digging this ditch while I'm being harassed by freaking my boss who's a clown at corporate America got bought out by some freaking Mitt Romney, Bain Capital, and they just want more blood from me. And that is, what is that doing to your heart? What's it doing to your stress levels? And then I'm going to take some drugs. What is that doing? I'm going to take a stat Lipitor. What is that doing? Oh, but it's going to reduce my blood pressure. Is there any evidence that's going to help you? And what does Lipitor do on your brain, by the way? Because remember, you're working to avoid getting in a long-term care facility because of Alzheimer's and dementia. So I'm going to take Lipitor to reduce my heart because I'm so stressed out of work. My freaking, I got hypertension. So I'm going to take Lipitor or another statin. And what does that do for your brain? Oh, you don't believe me? All right, let's check this out. Let me read you a quick passage from Human Heart, Cosmic Heart by Dr. Thomas Cowell. A nutter, if you will. Some guy called me a nutter because I challenged Einstein's theory of relativity. I'm a nutter. Stay in my lane, this guy says. Whenever someone says stay in my lane, I'm like, ooh, I'm onto something. That's such a freaking, I, I stay in your lane or do better. Oh, it's just like, they used to say lowest common denominator. Oh, you're appealing to the lowest common denominator, Trump. They, they, they stopped saying that. Now they still say do better and they're stay in your lane. I hate that crap. But anyway, so here's uh, Tom. I tell many of my patients that I believe in the anvil, an, <laughs> the anvil theory of medicine. Uh, say you are not prone to headaches. Then one day you're walking down the street and an anvil falls on your head. After that, you have daily headaches. <laughs> it's probably from the anvil. <laughs> Some doctors don't believe in the anvil theory. A colleague of mine was an Air Force flight surgeon. At his yearly physical, he was told he had high cholesterol and that he needed to take the statin Lipitor if he wanted to keep flying. A few weeks after starting Lipitor, he experienced a bout of amnesia while flying. He asked the doctor if the, his doctor if it was from the Lipitor. And of course, the doctor said, no, we're going to give statins and water. Suspicious, my colleague stopped the drug and didn't experience amnesia again. A year later, after he, start the after he started the drug again so he could continue flying, he experienced another bout of amnesia. His doctor again insisted that it was not caused by the Lipitor. My colleague began to research the connection himself. He set up a website to compile stories from other patients on statin drugs, and then he eventually wrote the book Lipitor, Thief of Memory, detailing the mechanisms where statin drugs impede memory. Inspired by the stories of thousands of people who suffer the same symptoms. Besides pointing out that one of the dangers of statin drugs, the point of the story is that a lot of doctors either don't believe in the anvil theory, or even if they do, don't bother to take the time to ask their patients the right questions. Are you taking the time to ask your own questions about your own health? And so here's my man, Dwayne Graveline. Now you might say, Dwayne, Dwayne Graveline, who's that? When Dr. Dwayne Gravine, former astronaut, by the way, because remember NASA fanboys, if he's an astronaut, he's legit. Aerospace medical research scientist, flight surgeon, and family doctor is given Lipitor to lower his cholesterol. He temporarily loses his short-term memory. Urged a year later to resume the drug at half dose, he lost both his short-term and retrograde memory and is finally diagnosed in an ER as having transient global amnesia. Amnesia. This is a scary, appalling, appealing written account of his search for answers that the medical community did not have. Let's look at old Dwayne Grave. He's an American physician and NASA astronaut. He was one of six scientists selected in 1965 for NASA's fourth group of astronauts uh, for the Apollo program. 
who is best known for being immersed in water for seven days as part of a zero gravity deconditioning research while working at the USAF. Interesting. He was also a uh, uh, flight surgeon in 1957. Hmm. He authored 10 professional publications, reports on biological deconditioning and weightlessness measures. Like, the point being is no one knows your body better than you. And you're relying on these fools that freaking give you drugs because they get paid to give you drugs. And I say, yes, it's foolish. It's foolish to sit there and say, oh, you have high blood pressure. Here's a statin to re reduce that. What, well, what's the result of that? Uh, nothing, no, nothing. Yeah, bull crap. And so you're so worried about long-term care that, that you're going to keep working because you're worried about Alzheimer's. You're going to keep working, getting high blood pressure, high blood pressure, high blood pressure. They're going to give you statins, which can in, in, inhibit your memory and thus leading to dementias and Alzheimer's. All right, you got to do what you got to do. The problem is because you're working your crappy old stressful job, you don't get a time. time you, there's no time for you to do the research. It's all by design, man. All by design. Two income families, we don't want people to research. We want people to listen, do what we tell them to do. All right, you do you, I'll do me. We'll see you.